Hey, this is David Spitz, California Strength. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the 40-yard dash, the most important event in the NFL Combine for sure. Um, really important uh, test metric for you in your team. I have with me two of my athletes, uh, Dylan Wynn, who played at Oregon State and then with the Cleveland Browns, uh, gained 20 pounds through our combine preparation program and dropped his 40 from somewhere around a 5.3 to about a 4.95 in that seven, uh, eight week time slot. Corbin Laux um, played at uh, Utah and the University of Nevada and then uh, with the Seattle Seahawks and Denver Broncos. Uh, he is one of our fastest athletes that's ever come through the program uh, at an, an official time of 4.34. So I wanna talk today about the 40 yard dash. A lot of people think that there's very little that you can affect with regard to the 40, and that simply isn't true. It's a skill set that can be honed, that can be taught just like anything else. Um, and there's two primary phases that we really wanna focus on with the 40. The first is the drive phase. So that start from zero to about 15 yards. Uh, the second is the acceleration phase. So from that 15 yard all the way through the 40, you never wanna slow down in a 40 yard dash. It's different than any track and field event. This is just simply drive and acceleration that we're gonna be focusing on. So we're gonna talk about the start, we're gonna talk about what things to think about, we're gonna talk about the acceleration, how to transition from drive into acceleration, and a couple exercises you can do to incorporate uh, into your training. We're gonna talk about the start a little bit. Um, really important that the first thing that we consider is that the feet remain underneath the hips. So the hips are gonna create a lot of the power that we're looking for in the start, so the feet need to be directly under the hips. Now, in this situation, we're going to have our athletes take the entire line with their hand. So, a lot of people will teach athletes to step a certain distance away from the line. What we want to consider is uh, angles through the knee, through the uh, shin that are appropriate, things that we're looking for. And then let your athletes decide how comfortable they are from the line, okay? So, we're going to get into a position here where we take the entire line and we're going to talk about where the pressure should reside on the foot first and foremost, okay? So in the foot, we want the front foot to have about 70% of the weight. Um, the back foot is gonna have the remaining 30%. The front foot, you're gonna, you're gonna organize right in the middle of the foot. All of the pressure should be towards the middle of the foot. And in the back foot, we want all the pressure to be on the ball of the foot, not on the toes. So we talked about pressure on the foot. 70% being on the front foot, 30% being on the back foot, and how we want a neutral uh, foot position uh, with the lead foot and on the ball of the foot in the back foot. Now, the second thing we wanna really consider is angles. So, there's two angles that we really want to make sure exist in uh, this 40 start. The first is a 90 degree angle here from the femur to the tibia and fibia. This 90 degree angle, really, really imperative. The second angle, is formed from the shin or tib fib and the ground. So this angle here should be approximately 45 degrees from the ankle to the ground up through the shin, okay? So he feels tension in the quadricep, tension in the front of the leg. Now we're gonna talk about uh, another important aspect is the hand. So we wanna form a bridge here uh, and the, the, the arm as it uh, works from the shoulder down into the ground, we want the hand to be organized just outside shoulder width we put this bridge down, we want it to be a, a really strong structure. So we're bone on bone all the way up through these shoulders. When we take our stance, if we talked about 70% and 30% being our weight distribution from our feet, now we want to talk about weight distribution from our hand back to our feet. We're going to have about 60% of the weight on this lead hand, okay? 40% is going to be devoted towards the feet. If I was to knock his hand out of the, out of the way, he would collapse forward. So bringing the shoulders, just in line with this, with this hand, so we make one nice rigid line, 60% of the weight right here, 40% back here. So the drive phase, we really focus on the first 10 yards to kind of round out, perfect our drive phase. So again, we talked about how to set up for the 40. Now, uh, the other hand that is not down, as we take our stance, is gonna be up and free. We never wanna see this arm wrap behind the back or down here at the hip pocket. It's gonna be up and free because we're going to drive forward with this arm and back with this arm as we push from both feet. As we drive out, we wanna make sure that this foot strikes in front of the hip here. Most of the drive phase is very quad dominant and we want this angle to form from shoulder, hip, knee, down through the ball of the foot. 
This is a very strong angle. This back arm angle is about 120 degrees as he throws it back. This front arm angle remains at about 90. His head and spine stay at neutral, and his eyes are gonna be fixed about 10 yards down the track the entire time. The analogy we use in the 40 start is like an airplane taking off down a runway. So really good exercise to do to promote uh, the feel of the drive phase. It's really important that we don't want the heel to collapse down in any of these steps, especially when we're trying to generate some stride length and push through the quad. So we need to stay up on the balls of our feet. If we establish a 45 degree angle, the eye, head and spine are at neutral, eyes are forward. We're gonna push right through the ball of the foot to get this ankle uh, uh, to fire, uh, to get this calf to fire, and then come back down all the way up. Really important that this knee stays up, this toe stays up, the eyes head stay up, and the head stays in neutral. Back down, maybe 10 reps on each side, up. Ingraining this position and strengthening this position, up. Another exercise to really kind of focus on drive phase mechanics, uh, it's called a switch drill, and you can do as many different progressions as you like, but starting with that toe up and the knee up, head and spine at neutral, working down so this heel is off the deck, and we're gonna switch our feet, so pop. So again, this knee comes up, this toe comes up, we never want our toe to drop, so we don't want any plantar flexion. What tends to happen to a lot of athletes is after they come from the ground, they drop their toe, or they don't get their knee high enough. Okay, so knee up, toe up, and switch, and switch, and the core stays tight the entire time. Again, a good drive phase drill uh, to work on with your athletes. You can do sets of two, uh, and you can switch, pop, pop. You could do threes, pop, pop, pop. And start to ingrain the feel of uh, those drive phase mechanics. So as we work from the drive phase into the acceleration phase, there's two things that we need to have happen. Number one, the foot in the drive phase where it's striking in front of the hip is now going to want to strike directly underneath the hip. So as he kind of transitions at about 10 yards to kind of get more upright, go ahead, Corb, take the next step. His foot is gonna get more and more directly underneath the hip, and the power is gonna now be generated from the glutes down through the ground as opposed to relying on the quads in the drive phase. So ground reaction force is absolutely critical when we're talking about developing stride length. So Corbin, when you hear him run, Go ahead, Corb, just give us a quick little run. His knees are up, his toes are up, and his foot's coming down through the ground to create that ground reaction force we're looking for. Here at California Strength, we're all about high concept, low tech. See, a lot of the exercises that we do are very simple and you can do just about anywhere. This trampoline costs about $35. I think it's the best tool to learn how to sprint properly in the acceleration phase. So. What we like to do is go for bouts of somewhere between five and 10 second sprints on the trampoline. And we start with a nice jog in. So Corbin will start by just sprinting in place. Nice, easy jog in. Again, the force is coming down through the trampoline and the knees are coming up as the toes come up. The arm action is nice and relaxed, working from 90 degrees on the front side to 120 degrees on the back side. And as we say three, two, one, go. He's gonna hold that position and focus on his stride mechanics, his frequency, his knee lift, and stop. And really ingrain that good angle that we're looking for with regard to the torso, good angles with regard to knee and toe. His chin is up, he can stay relaxed, and it's a low impact exercise that goes a long way in coaching up stride fundamentals. This is Dave Spitz at California Strength. Thanks for watching.